A science lab is a room or workplace for the conduct of scientific investigation. Safe and good lab practice is very important. For our own safety and the safety of others to avoid accidents, we must obey all the rules and safety precautions. Hello to all at home. You're watching once again ITTV. Thank you for watching ITTV. In the previous lesson, we learned about what is science. Do you still remember what is the definition of science? Well, today we begin a new lesson. From the beginning, I'm sure you have an idea of what are we going to talk about in this lesson. Today's lesson is Science Laboratory. So, in a science lab, obviously, we have to have rules and precaution. This is to prevent accidents from taking place. Let's start today's lesson by learning these warnings and precaution and rules which you should follow when you're in a science lab. Firstly, never enter the laboratory unless a teacher is present. Next, never run or play in the laboratory. The lab, the science lab, is not a playground. Never remove anything from the laboratory without your teacher's permission. Never use your bare hands to transfer chemicals. Let's say these are actually chemicals. Never ever use bare hands to transfer them. So if not bare hands, what do you actually use? Now obviously you have to wear gloves to protect your hands. Never leave experiments unattended. Now let's say you're actually using a Bunsen burner, which you will learn further what is it, to heat up any substances. Never ever leave them unattended. Never smell gases directly. Fan a little of the gas towards the nose instead. Now, never ever do this. Always fan them. Keep them far away. Let's have a look at the next rule. Never taste anything without your teacher's permission. No eating or drinking in the laboratory. When you have your recess, never carry food into the science lab. Always follow strictly the instructions given. Wear safety glasses whenever necessary. Now students, have you seen a safety glass before? Do you actually use them in school? Here, this is actually a safety glass. You wear them when you're doing experiments. Always read the label on a reagent bottle carefully to make sure it contains the chemicals you want. Make sure you pick the correct chemicals as mixing different or dangerous chemicals can actually cause big explosions. Put the bottle in its original place immediately after use. Always do not leave other chemicals or materials lying around in the science lab. This is very dangerous. Always handle flammable liquids with great care. This might actually cause a big fire in the science lab in your school. So be careful with the reagents or the chemicals that you use in the science lab. Report all accidents and breakage to your teacher. Always tie up your tie or long hair. Never leave your long hair lying like that because you can actually burn your hair as you're carrying out experiments involved in heating. Lastly, always wash hands after experiments. Now these are the basic rules that you actually should follow when you're in a science lab. Remember, keep in mind all these precautions to prevent further accidents in a science laboratory. So what can you actually find in the science lab? Apparatus, obviously. Without apparatus, how can you carry out different types of experiment? Let's have a look or a glimpse into a few types of apparatus that you can find in your science lab. Firstly, the test tube. What is the function of a test tube? To hold small amount of liquid. Next, we have the conical flask. It's to hold bigger amount of liquid. Not only in the conical flask, we have got different types of apparatus which you can use to hold a bigger amount of liquid. What are they actually? 
a beaker. The function is to hold bigger amount of liquid. Next we have a flat bottom flask. The function is also similar like the beaker and the conical flask. They all hold bigger amount of liquid. Only the test tube holds small amount of liquid. Let's have a look at the next apparatus. Measuring cylinder. The function of a measuring cylinder is actually to measure the amount of liquid. What is the next apparatus? A pipette. Now what is a pipette actually used for? To measure a fixed volume of liquid. Other than the pipette, what else do we have to measure the amount of liquid? We have got the burette. Burettes are used to measure small volumes of liquid accurately. So remember, the measuring cylinder, the pipette and the burette are used to actually measure the volume of the liquid needed for the experiment. This is a retort stand to hold or support apparatus. Next, we have the tripod stand. The word tri here actually means three, so it has got three legs this stand. To support apparatus during heating. Next is the Bunsen burner. The Bunsen burner provides flame for heating. The next lab apparatus is a wire gauze to ensure even heating and support apparatus. So how do you actually heat up certain things while you carry out experiment in the lab? Let's have a look at the example. So how do you actually heat up something when you're in the science lab? Let's have a look at the example. This is example of heating. See how they use the tripod stand, Bunsen burner, wire gauze and lastly flat bottom flask to actually carry out the heating. This is the correct method. The next lab apparatus is the filter funnel. It is used with filter paper to filter mixtures of solids and liquids. Now let's take this for an example. You have got a liquid and in there you have got sugar or salt. You try to mix them then you filter them. The salt is actually the solid and the liquid is the water. So when you use a filter funnel and the filter paper, they would actually get filtrated. This is example of filtration. See how they use the retort stand to carry out filtration. The next lab apparatus is a test tube holder. It is used to hold test tube while heating. Now obviously you can't hold the test tube when you're carrying out heating using the Bunsen burner. This would burn your hand. So you use the test tube holder instead. Next is the test tube stand. It is used to place the test tube. What is a spatula? It is used to transfer small amount of solid. And lastly, let's have a look at the last apparatus. Evaporating dish to hold liquids for evaporation. So these are the apparatus that you can find in a normal science lab, basically in your school. So I hope you could remember all the science apparatus and their function. Let's go further to the Do You Know segment to learn further about the Bunsen burner. What is a Bunsen burner? A Bunsen burner is a gas used to provide flames for heating. So this is where you get gas for carrying out experiments which involve heating. So what is the structure of a Bunsen burner? The Bunsen burner usually has got a chimney as you can see in the picture. Then below the chimney they have got collar and below the collar they have an air hole. What is the function of it? To actually mix air and gas which comes from the gas tube. Later we have got the stand. The stand is how the Bunsen burner actually can stand still on the floor mat. The heat proof mat is used so that the table or anything that you place the Bunsen burner on does not get burned due to the heating process. Next we have the rubber tubing. The rubber tubing actually connects the Bunsen burner to the gas tap. This is the structure of the Bunsen burner. Remember all their parts well as you will be using them in the science lab in your school. What is the proper way of using a Bunsen burner? Connect Bunsen burner to a gas tap using a piece of rubber tubing. You can see in this picture here that the rubber tubing is being connected to the gas tap. Next, place the Bunsen burner on a heat proof mat. Close the air hole by adjusting the collar. 
Bring the lighted match over the barrel and turn on the gas tap. The flame is yellow. Now this is how you actually light up the Bunsen burner. Open the air hole slowly and the color changes to blue. So remember, once you light the Bunsen burner, it is usually yellow. Then the flame starts turning into blue once you open the air hole. This is because the mixture of air and gas takes place. When not using, close the air hole to change the blue flame into yellow. So when there's actually air, the flame would be blue. If there's no air, the flame would be yellow. Yellow is the color of safety while using the Bunsen burner. Let's see the last step. Turn off the gas tap after use. Make sure you remember to turn off the gas tap after you use the Bunsen burner. These are the proper way of using a Bunsen burner. Now, obviously, when you're playing with heat, you need to have safety precaution. What should you do so that you don't get yourself burned while using the Bunsen burner? Make sure gas is not leaking. This is the first safety rule. Keep papers away and tie your hair. This is to prevent what from taking place? Fire, obviously. If the flame turns to green and produces a loud noise, turn off the gas tap immediately. So remember, if ever the flame turns green, turn off the gas tap quickly. Do not touch the barrel as it may be very hot. Remember not to touch the Bunsen burner. And lastly, the last safety rule for the day is use a tripod stand and wire gauze when heating chemicals in a beaker. So these are the safety rules, the structure and the proper way of using a Bunsen burner. So have you ever seen hazardous signs before? What is hazardous signs? They are actually on the label of the bottles. What do they actually mean? Let's have a look at a few examples of different types of signs which warn you stay away, keep away, do not touch and so on. Firstly, this sign here showing you flame is obviously a sign telling you that the chemicals are actually flammable. What are the examples? They are ethanol, petrol. How do you handle them? Keep them away from fire, obviously. What is the next sign or symbol? This fan-like symbol here is a symbol of radioactive material. So what are examples which are radioactive material? They are uranium and plutonium. Uranium and plutonium are actually chemicals which are very high in radioactive. So how do you actually keep them? Keep them in special lead containers. While you keep them in lead containers, they actually prevent the radioactive rays from coming out of this uranium and plutonium. What is the next symbol? Now, the next symbol here shows you corrosive sign. What are chemicals that can be corrosive? They are acids and alkalides. So how do you keep these acids and alkalides? Do you even know an example of an acid? The hydrosulfuric acid. So, let's see how can you keep these acids and alkalis. Avoid contact with skin and eyes. Wash quickly with running water if touches skin. So, if you ever come in contact with acids and alkali, remember to wash them under running water. What is the next symbol that you can find in the science laboratory? This is a sign showing you that the substance is poisonous. So, it is either toxic or poisonous. The examples are mercury and lead. Never ever put any chemicals into your mouth while you are in the science laboratory. So, how do you prevent yourself from getting poison? Do not taste, touch or inhale. It is important that you do not eat this material or chemicals, but inhaling or touching can also spread the poison. What is the next symbol? It is the symbol which actually warns you of the danger of explosion. What are examples of chemicals in your science lab that can explode? Sodium and potassium. How do you handle things so that a big explosion does not take place in your science laboratory? Avoid contact with water and keep in paraffin. Now paraffin is a kind of oil. So remember, do not get sodium or potassium near any water and keep them in paraffin. This is the last symbol for the day. It shows you the danger that the symbol is a irritant. So what kind of substance in the science lab is an irritant? 
ammonia and chloroform. So how do you actually remove this substance if you ever touch them? Wash with a lot of water if spill on body parts. Therefore, remember students to always wash your hand if you come by any ammonia or chloroform. I do hope you can remember all these hazardous signs as this could prevent accidents from taking place in the science lab. Let's move over to the exam lab of the day to see whether you could answer all of these questions correctly. Question 1. Which of the following is not a lab rule? Never enter the laboratory unless a teacher is present. This is A. B. Run or play in the laboratory. C. Never remove anything from the laboratory without your teacher's permission. And lastly, D. Never use your bare hands to transfer chemicals. Now, rules. What is the correct answer here? What you shouldn't do when you're in a science lab? It's B. Run or play in the laboratory. Let's see question 2. What is the function of the apparatus below? The apparatus is a filter funnel. What do you think students? What is the function of the filter funnel? You saw earlier what are the examples of using a filter funnel. Let's see the answer. Used with filter paper to filter mixtures of solids and liquids. So what is question 3? What is not true about the sign below? Now, what sign is this? Is it a written sign? Is it corrosive sign? Or is it flammable sign? Let's see the answer option. A. It is sign of flammable substance. B. Example of substance are acid and alkali. C. You should avoid touching this substance. D. If you touch them, wash quickly under running water. So, the correct sign is corrosive symbol. So, let's see what's the correct answer here. Correct answer is A. It is sign of flammable substance. This is not true. The sign of flammable substance shows you a flame or fire. So, I hope you could answer all the questions correctly. Let's do a quick roundup of the lesson today. Test tube conical flask Beaker measuring cylinder Retort stand Bunsen burner Filter funnel The symbol showing flammable Radioactive symbol Corrosive symbol Toxic or poisonous Explosive and lastly, a written. So I hope that you could actually remember all the symbols and the apparatus that you can find in the science laboratory. That's all for today, students. I would see you soon in the next lesson with a section of science in ITTV. Till then, take care and bye.